Um, I'm Professor Peter Stanley from the University of New South Wales, Canberra. And as an Australian, do you have a particular view of Gallipoli that might be different to what we have here in the UK? I think Australians as a whole have a different view of Gallipoli. Um, Australia seems to have appropriated the idea of Gallipoli, that many Australians in fact are surprised to find that there are other people involved in the Gallipoli campaign, the, the British and, and French. Uh, so the, the ANZAC and especially Australian idea that they own Gallipoli I think really needs to be contested. Yeah, I mean, what, what do you think the uh, reason is for this? Gallipoli's always been associated in the Australian mind with the idea of, of nationhood. Uh, it was said at the time that, that the Australian nation, which was created in only in 1901, that the Australian nation was born on the, the cliffs of Gallipoli. Well, of course, that was a phrase that was invented during the First World War and virtually as propaganda. And I think we need to be wary of just accepting uh, the propaganda of the First World War. A hundred years later, we should be forming our own views. And the view that it, the nation was created at Gallipoli is nonsense. And, and uh, how do you think this actually played out? Were the, the people who in Australia are expecting to go and fight as part of the British Empire then? Or? Well, that's, that's the irony, that in 1914, lots of men joined to defend the empire. Well, a century on, where Australians are now a fully independent, uh, very proud nation, uh, feel the idea that they were part of an empire to be somehow demeaning or irrelevant, uh, or indeed that many of them are ignorant of the fact that Australia was part of the British Empire, and they don't seem to be able to understand the reasons for which men enlisted in 1914. So we're, they're projecting the idea of Australia today onto the Australia of a century ago. And why did they enlist in 1914? Well, the answer is we don't know, because nobody asked men questions about why they enlisted. But there are but lots of, of explanations have come out since. Uh, I mean, some men enlisted, for example, to get out of a bad marriage. In those days, you couldn't get divorced, but you could quietly disappear, and you know, possibly even by changing your name. But we're talking just about Australians here, or would you? This battle would have applied across oh, the empire. Oh, uh, indeed, it would have applied across the yeah. empire. Yeah. Uh, and the same reasons, I mean, men enlisted to get out of jobs they didn't like, uh, uh, the, uh, the idea of adventure, the idea of a steady job, the idea of seeing the world. Lots of men, of course, were principled. They wanted to defend the rights of small nations like Belgium. But, and lots of combinations of reasons. But the fact is, we really don't know. But uh, in Australia's case, um, they were joining uh, as volunteers or as regulars, or mm. they signing up to ah. join the army or signing up to be a, a volunteer in the army. Yeah, in Australia, the, the Australia created a special military force for the Great War. Uh, the Australian army, which existed, wasn't allowed to fight outside Australia. So you had to volunteer for the Australian Imperial Force. And the very name suggests that it's about Australia's place within the empire. So men volunteered to serve as part of the Australian Imperial Force for the duration of the war. Because what they didn't know was what they were getting themselves into. They didn't realise the sort of war they were about to fight. And, and when, when they're in Gallipoli then, um, do, do you get a feeling that there's a sort of build-up of anti-British feeling? Or what, what, what would the Australian attitude be actually at the time of mm, the battle? Yeah. At the time, Australians believed that the British Army was the best army in the world and they were proud to serve alongside it. In fact, many of them thought that, th that they were citizen volunteer soldiers. By the time they landed on Gallipoli, they'd only been in the army for about eight months. So in fact, most of them thought that they wouldn't be allowed to fight at all. They expected they'd be sent off to garrison India. Well, that didn't happen. Um, so many of them had a, a great admiration for the British army at the landing on Gallipoli. As the campaign went on and as casualties mounted and disillusionment spread, many of them had that admiration rather dented and tarnished. Uh, but even at the end of the war there was still a great deal of respect for the best of the British Army. But one thing that the First World War gave Australians was this sense of their own identity, their own worth, their own value. Mm -hmm. And they gained a greater sense of their Australianness. Yeah. Um, when you're talking about Australia here, we're, we're sort of in the context of Anzac, mm -hmm. um, I presume the same would have applied for New Zealanders? Pretty much. Or is it exactly the same as in Australia or not? I don't not exactly the same, no, because New Zealanders tended to have a greater regard for Britain throughout. I mean, they were much smaller, they were much more cohesively English in their composition of New Zealand society. Uh, for example, there were fewer Irish migrants to New Zealand. So New Zealanders tended to have a much, more, uh, a much greater respect for longer for Britain. 